Hey everyone, this is Nathan Cross checking in, and for today's episode of Healthline, it's actually going to be a video split up into two different parts. The first part giving you some background and context and understanding your skin, and the second part I'm going to be addressing specifically skin dryness. The first thing that we're going to do is go over how skin is constructed. Our skin is made predominantly of two different layers, the outermost layer being the epidermis and the underlying layer being the dermis layer. The epidermis is the outermost layer of our skin, the portion that we can actually see. The dermal layer underneath it is actually made predominantly of dense connective tissue. In addition to this dense tissue, there's also other materials. And what's unique about the dermis is that it's composed of what we know as collagen and elastic fibers. And these fibers is what gives our skin, specifically the dermal layer of our skin, its strength and resilience. And underneath the dermis layer of the skin is actually another form of connective tissue that keeps everything anchored in tight, but insofar that you can still move the skin just enough for some flexibility. But let's actually move back up to the epidermis and focus on that and ask ourselves this question. What exactly is the epidermis made of? Well, the epidermis is made of what we call epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is a material that covers many of our internal and external body surfaces. An example of an internal surface would be the inside of our hollow organs, for example, or maybe in our esophagus or in our mouth. An external surface would be the one we want to focus on for today's video, would be our skin or lips, things of that nature. Now, epithelial tissue is very dense. It's fairly composed of tightly packed cells insofar there isn't really that much room for anything else in between, except for things like sweat glands, oil glands and hair follicles I'm sure there's other stuff but those are the main things we want to think about but it's important to realize that the skin at the epidermal layer is made up of a specific type of epithelial tissue and this type of epithelial tissue is called stratified squamous epithelium stratified means that there's more than one layer of cells and that's a good thing because naturally a stratified layer of cells would usually come with it a protective function and for good reason because we would conventionally want a protective barrier covering our body in area or multiple areas of our body naturally subjected to cuts bruises or any type of contaminants trying to enter our body and harm us. Squamous represents the shapes of the outermost cells. When I talk about outermost cells, because we're dealing with a stratified squamous epithelium, we have multiple layers of cells. The most superficial cells, so at the top of our skin, for example, would be flat. Squamous would imply flatter cells towards the superficial end or the scientific term would be the apical end of our epithelial tissue. Looking through uh, a microscope, you'll be able to see multiple layers of cells. The top layer would be our squamous, our flatter cells, and towards the lower end of the epithelial tissue, the basal end as we like to call it, that's where cells start to become sm are smaller. They're more cube-shaped, the term is cuboidal, and towards the basal end, we have our cells being most metabolically active. And when I say metabolically active, it generally means that we have the greatest amount of cell division, younger cells towards the bottom, towards the basal end, towards the dermis. That's where the rest of the connective tissue is. But as you move up, cells grow, they get larger, they get older. As they move up towards the apical end, towards the superficial ends of our skin, they start to get thinner, they start to die out. They also start to increase in size, but they get flatter as well. But one of the key takeaways in understanding cell growth over time is that once they start to get older, they start to develop a protein called keratin. And that's a protein that develops in the outermost cell, well, in the highest concentration in the outermost cells of our epithelial tissue. And keratin is what protects these cells from stress and abrasion. But what a lot of folks might not be aware of is the fact that at this point, at that point in their life, the cells on the outermost layer of our skin are already pretty much dead. All of the skin cells that we see at the top layer, the superficial, the apical end of our epidermis are basically just dead skin cells waiting to be expelled by younger cells moving up from the basal end all the way to the apical end to push them out of the way and those dead skin cells will just naturally flake off fall off get washed off if we're taking a shower or a bath or however else these skin cells will leave our body and this is all really good because if that weren't the case if we didn't have skin cells constantly being reproduced our skin wouldn't technically be able to heal as fast we would be a lot more subjected to outer contaminants to cuts 
bruises and abrasions, our overall skin integrity would just be significantly weaker. And another thing to actually pay attention to that I actually wanted to lead into the next topic, into the next video, is that our skin would be a lot weaker but also a lot drier.